All right, tech fans. So yesterday, Apple introduced their own silicon for the first time ever, the M1. And honestly, I know that a lot of PC users out there are going to scoff, but I'm gonna tell you why the M1 is absolutely nothing to scoff about. Let's talk tech. Are you looking for a code for your favorite game? Or maybe you need a new Windows 10 key, but don't want to spend a lot of money? Here's your chance to get the best deals online at CD Key Sales. Game codes are as low as $10 and Windows keys are under 15. And right now, you can save an additional 18% by using the code TT18 during checkout. Buying has also never been easier. Just create your account, select the items that you want, put in the discount code and complete checkout. All of your purchases will be in your account ASAP and all the keys and codes are guaranteed to authorize without a problem. So save big today and buy with confidence with CD Key Sales. Yesterday, Apple finally unleashed the M1 processor and right off the bat, even though it's only going to be in a few products, the technology surrounding the M1 is actually really incredible. In a way, they have kind of reinvented the wheel. Now, I know at first glance, some people are probably gonna say, well, okay, that CPU is just an, you know, it's an eight core CPU, an eight core GPU, but then you've got these 16 neural cores, 16 neural cores. Now this is something totally different. So you have more neural cores than you actually have on the GPU or the CPU. And all of these neural cores combine a lot of different technologies to make everything just absolutely work better. There's all these little tiny microprocessors inside of there for rendering, for doing Photoshop, for playing games. And uh, we'll talk a little bit about more about that in just a second. But what's very, really interesting about these products, so they released, you know, yesterday there's gonna be a MacBook Air, a new MacBook Pro, and then the Mac Mini. And the Mac Mini is actually what I'm going to be buying, getting my hands on, because I've wanted one of these for a long time. And I was really, honestly, <laughs> highly anticipating this. Now, to a lot of people in the PC industry, you might be just thinking, oh my God, this is really, really no big deal. But it really is because the way that Apple went about doing this is just different. They actually went about designing a whole new CPU that actually just made all of the different programs and things that are out there that they use work better. Now, this is a different type of step. Usually people, they make their product, Photoshop or whatever, and it'll work on, you know, whatever, you know, the thing is out there, but nobody has ever actually sat down and went, okay, let's take like 10 or 15 programs that we know people use all the time and let's make these programs be able to run the absolute best that they can run and do it with very little power. Now we all know ARM technology, that's been, a, you know, something that's been around. One of the big things about ARM is that it uses, you know, low power. So the M1 right off the bat, even though it is, you know, just a eight, you know, eight core GPU, eight core CPU, you know, 16 neural processor thing, it's still going to run really cool. And in fact, in the MacBook Air, it doesn't even have a fan. It's completely quiet, completely cool. That's how much they've engineered this. Now, this can have a big impact because one thing they kept showing over and over and over again was productivity and guess what? Gaming. Yeah, for the first time ever, I'm really seeing, you know, Apple push gaming. They're showing gaming on everything they showed yesterday. Every single thing that they showed yesterday was partially doing performance testing with, you know, things like I said, Photoshop, rendering, working in, in light space, all different types of things. They showed how great it worked, but at the same time, they also showed games. They showed the computer actually making graphics for the games as well as playing the games. I'm going to tell you right now, my iMac, even though it has a 5,700 in it, it's an eight gigabyte, it sucks for gaming. Totally sucks. Now, if I go, if I go, if I go in and I and you install Boot Camp and I do it that way, it's a little bit better. But still, all in all, 
The IMAX that are out in the market right now, the Mac Minis, none of these systems, the laptops, none of them are really geared for gaming. And gaming is just like mm, dismal. That's what I'm gonna give it, you know, dismal. Very, very dismal. That's all I'm gonna, I'm gonna say about it. But if Apple can now have a CPU GPU combo that'll actually run games and run them really good, that's going to be a game changer because a lot of the times, the only reason I see PC people keeping PCs is to play games on. This is how it's been. And I'm still not really sure where this, you know, gap come, came in at. Me and John from TLD were talking about, he's like, you really shouldn't really touch that subject, but where did the division come between Mac and PC? Because is it a Mac, a PC? I mean, because it's personal computer. They're all personal computers, but somewhere down the line, PCs are like the gaming PCs, x86, and then we got, you know, the Mac stuff, <laughs> you know? So where that division actually came in, I don't know. But this new M1 processor, if it pans out to be what it says, I can't wait to get my hands on it. I looked yesterday, um, you can actually order all of the computers that they said yesterday. Every single one of them is available for sale. I'm looking at a Mac Mini, a totally decked out one with 16 gigabytes of RAM and a two terabyte SSD is like 1200 bucks. And that's perfect for me in my music studio because I don't care about great graphics or anything like that whatsoever. I'm only interested in running Logic Pro and all the plugins and everything that I use with it. And if it can run all those more efficiently, I'm totally down. Plus, I have these really giant monitors that I've been wanting to hook up for a while, and just the, the room on my desk, I can't do it, but my iMac takes that space up. But now, I can put this big giant monitor up there, split it into two screens so I can see part of my mixing and part of what I'm doing at the same time, so I'm really looking forward to it. But the big thing is this, look, if right now, out of the gate, the M1 can do all of these things amazingly well. And the reason why I think that they really it's kind of reinventing the wheel is because it seems like those 16 neural cores are really going to be doing a lot of the process. It seems like the 16 neural cores, you're gonna get all your level two cache, level three cache, all these fetch things, everything's gonna be right there. And then for your raw power, you're gonna have the, you know, the cores for the GPU and the cores for the CPU. But picture this, what about next gen? And I mean, I'm hoping it's going to be M2. It probably would. That would just make sense. I mean, unless they're going to call it something different. But the M2, think about that. That could be 16 gigabytes dedicated cores, 16 gigabytes dedicated cores, again, for your GPU, and then 32 of these neural cores. And just imagine the possibilities. And we all know that's how stuff goes. You know, CPU goes from 2.5 gigabytes to 2.7 gigabytes to 3.0. That's just, you know, that's just how it is. And you're getting, you know, Intel for years just slacked off and really didn't do too much for this. But picture this, the industry right now is really changing. And even though you might scoff at this, what about if in a few years, the Apple Silicon becomes the silicon of choice for everyone? What if it works so well and becomes so popular that even the people on the so-called PC side of things really want this technology, we could see a big change in the market altogether. We can honestly see AMD and Intel only becoming companies that sell CPUs or maybe only companies that sell GPUs. We never know, something could happen. I mean, if Apple Silicon became the best silicon in town and everybody was using it and they could integrate with the other technologies, I mean, that's gonna be pretty interesting stuff. If you guys even happen to miss the launch or really just interested in new technology because this is definitely tech of tomorrow, you should check out Apple's announcement yesterday. Um, I have my video where I talk about my reaction to it and I'm not really that excited about laptop stuff. I know people out there, there's millions of people out there who use laptop stuff. They're probably like, yeah, let's do the yeah. This is awesome, but for me, I'm looking for the iMac and the Mac Mini, and the new Mac Mini with Apple Silicone is available. It was available yesterday, and I just think that's really, really incredible. So for PC people out there, at the end of the day, before you're going, oh yeah, it's just Apple, more, yeah, 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 this is something that's definitely going to be a game changer. Now, maybe right now, it's only on Apple hardware, but trust me, if it becomes something that's very efficient, works very well, you know that other people are going to want a piece of that action. And I honestly, I see that happening. Plus, 
We're not even talking about the other things. Picture this. With this new move by Apple, both Intel and AMD get a double finger salute because guess what? With the new Apple Silicon, they're not having to buy their GPUs from Intel. They're not having to buy their, excuse me, they're not having to buy their CPUs from Intel and their GPUs from AMD. Those days are over. So all of those monies that would be going to those people for those technologies is now out the door. Just completely out the door altogether. Now, maybe there are some technologies on the on these new things that they might have a split deal with Intel going. I'm not sure if they're still paying for licensing because I'm a lawyer who does all that stuff. But Apple making the move to making their own silicone is a really, really giant deal. It's the first time this has ever happened in the computer industry that that usually a company that just you know makes products all of a sudden comes out with their own technology like this. Now, another thing that could happen too is what if nvidia decides to do the same thing they have the technology they got fast gpus what if they decide that they want to make a cpu gpu combo now this is something else i just want to put in this video which is something i might have been thinking about in the beginning the pc industry was huge there was just tons of companies for every single solitary thing we go to these computer stores and there'd be stuff everywhere now there's no such really thing like that but what's really interesting though, is that we had all these CPU companies and then we were down to two CPU companies. Well, guess what? As of yesterday, there's now three CPU companies. There's Intel, there's AMD, and now there's Apple. And I know there are other companies out there, Motorola, Samsung, I know there's all these other companies that make silicon, but I'm talking about silicon for the desktop, just to be absolutely clear. So now, there's three, and if NVIDIA comes into the market, it's four. So even though the market actually at one point shrunk, there's actually enough room in the market now with the growing expansion of people and everything for more companies to be involved and give more choice, which at the end of the day, we all know is great for me and you as consumers. So that's my take, folks. I'm really looking forward to seeing what Apple does with this new M technology, the M1, on paper, sounds great. Having the ability to make all of your software work in conjunction with your technology right off the bat so that everything works great with no roadblocks, that's an incredible move. Like I said, for me, there's no scoffing. I'm about tech, and this is definitely tech of tomorrow. I'll have links down below if you guys want to check them out. Also, if you like what you see, make sure you hit that sub button, but turn on notifications. Otherwise, you won't know that I am here. So. Peace out. We'll see you guys back here on Tech of Tomorrow for more tech.